In this video, we're going to configure a string patch with Logic's EXS24 to respond to all five dimensions of touch from the Rolly Seaboard, plus be able to change articulations on the fly using a touch fader here on the Seaboard. First thing we want to do is configure the, the Seaboard itself to send MPE data because EXS24 can respond to the multi-channel MIDI data that the Seaboard sends. So we'll set channel mode to multi, MPE on, channel range of 2 through 16, and a pitch bend range of 48. We also want to note that the first touch fader, when you're in MIDI mode, is going to send CC107, because we'll be configuring that to change articulations. Let's go over to Logic and set this up. We'll add a track with EXS24, and we'll choose a preset of full strings plus from the orchestral folder. We want to choose the plus presets because those include multiple articulations that we can change on the fly. You'll notice many of the articulations include a plus and that before them there are various articulations like legato, staccato, and pizzicato. I'll be using full strings plus in this instance. Then I'd like to set EXS24 to respond to multi-channel MIDI data. So I'll open up this triangle in the lower left hand corner, set MIDI mono mode to on with a bass channel of 1, and check that the mono mode pitch bend range matches what I had set in the Rolly dashboard earlier. The first thing I'd like to configure is this touch fader to control articulation. Make sure you click the mode button until the uh, icons for our dimensions of touch are hidden and that this fader will now send CC107 and I can choose that as a modulation source in the next empty modulation slot here in EXS24. I'll then choose a destination of articulation ID and a modulation range of full. Let's hear what this sounds like. With the touch fader all the way at the bottom, I should get a legato sound. All right? If I put the touch fader in the middle, I get tremolo. A little higher, I get my trills, and close to the bottom, I'm gonna get staccato. It's really nice. It just records into a MIDI track as the CC, and we can change articulations on the fly. Very cool. Now I'd like to configure this patch to respond to the rest of the dimensions of touch. The first dimension of touch we're going to configure is strike, and we'll see that many of the parameters in EXS24 already respond to velocity, which is the MIDI message that strike transmits. We see here that we have a via velocity on level. In traditional MIDI keyboards, we often use velocity to control the level of the entire note, but that doesn't really make sense on a sustaining instrument like violin because we can change the level over the course of the note, so press would be much better for that. So I'll reduce the amount of modulation via velocity for level, and I'll increase the amount of attack time via velocity. This way, if I strike the key hard, and the sound comes right in. If I strike very gently, it swells in. That's a really natural connection to the gesture of strike. The next dimension of touch that I'd like to configure is glide. And we know that's going to work because we have MIDI mono pitch bend range set to 48. But let's just test it anyway. And it does work. Again, we can test glide range by playing a note, going down an octave, and playing the same pitch. The next dimension of touch that I'd like to configure is slide. And slide transmits control change 74, which we can choose as a modulation source in our modulation matrix. So let's set that as a modulation source. That's CC74. And the modulation destination we'll choose is filter cutoff. I'll choose a modulation range of maximum. I'll enable my filter and reduce it quite low. And let's test this out. I'll play a note. Comes in dull. And with that, we can create really nice dramatic crescendos. The next dimension of touch I'd like to add to this preset is press, which is how hard you're pushing on the key wave's surface. I'll switch my mode button over to expression mode and make sure the press touch fader is at maximum. Then in EXS24, I'll set pressure as a modulation source and volume as the modulation destination. I'll set the modulation range to maximum and try it out. It's functioning. But as I'm releasing my key, it's getting louder. So the modulation is opposite what I expect it to be. So we can go down here and invert the modulation. And this way, we get nice control of volume as we push into the key wave surface. 
The final dimension of touch is lift, which is how fast you release your hand from a key wave, and that transmits as MIDI off velocity or release velocity. By default, EXS24 may be set to ignore that type of data, but we can enable it. Let's go to the Edit button on EXS24, and then within the EXS24 editor, we'll go to the Edit menu and Preferences. You'll see an option there for Ignore Release Velocity. We want to make sure that is off so that EXS24 will respond to release velocity. Once we've done that, we can go into EXS24 and set a source for release velocity. A destination that I like for release velocity is amp envelope release time. I click on destination and I can choose my amplifier envelope release time, which is envelope to release. I'll set my amp envelope release time quite low, set a modulation range that's about halfway to three quarters of the range, and invert the modulation just like we did with pressure. And with that, I can play a note, I can release fast, and it'll just stop. If I play a note and I release slowly, it'll decay away nicely. So this way, we can cut notes off if the violin player wants to stop, he can let the notes ring out, and we have all these beautiful levels of expression. Let's try out a little performance.